Welcome to today's topic, Cities as Complex Adaptive Systems. Complex Adaptive Systems theory is a way to look at, as the name suggests, complex systems, and it emphasizes systems level properties. As you might imagine, cities are a prime example of complex adaptive systems. So in order to uh, understand this more deeply, let's try to think about what a complex adaptive system could be. But before we do that, let's introduce a distinction. Former Chancellor of Austria, Fred Sinovats, before an election, asked by a journalist about a particular topic, answered, everything is very complicated, at which point he did not get re-elected. If he would have said, everything is very complex, that would uh, qualified him as president of this institute here, the Santa Fe Institute, uh, which has been for the last 30 some years, uh, the location for research in comp complexity and complex adaptive systems. Okay, now what is a complex adaptive system? It generally has four characteristics. Uh, we look at a system and we see a diversity of parts. We also see interesting connectivity between parts. The parts are heavily interdependent. That means the behavior of one of the parts in the system influences the behavior of any other part of the system. And there is adaptation among the parts. That means those complex adaptive systems are generally fine-tuned. They are well-oiled machines. Uh, for those natural systems, Adaptation is a consequence of evolutionary processes. For technologically or design systems, while well, we try to do it ourselves and generally we are not very good at it, um, as we will see when we look at cities. So what those four characteristics uh, add up to is they provide a system level internal description of the system. It should be clear if you look at diversity, connectivity, interdependence, and adaptation, that cities are a prime example of a complex adaptive system. Now, to formalize this, uh, we can look at Melanie Mitchell's definition. Melanie Mitchell uh, is one of uh, the external faculty members at the Santa Fe Institute uh, and also the author of one of the leading introductory textbooks uh, in complexity complexity a guided tour. We have one chapter assigned, but I would recommend that anybody who is interested in that might take a look at the whole book. Now, for Mitchell, a complex system is a system in which large networks of components with no central control and simple rules of operation give rise to complex collective behavior, sophisticated information processing, and adaptation via learning and evolution. And uh, as a consequence, a complex system is a system that exhibits non-trivial, emergent, and self-organizing behaviors. Now, that's a handful of words. Let's think about uh, what the central elements are. Networks. The whole idea uh, of complex adaptive systems is that they can best be described as networks. Now, networks is a term that most of you are familiar by now. Most of you will be part of several social networks. You are now part of a network of university students. And of course, you're part of the network that makes up the global classroom. But networks uh, go much, uh, beyond, much more beyond the simple social. They basically include gene networks, um, economical networks, financial networks. So it's a universal description of interacting parts. And the emphasis here lies that there are specific types of connections between the elements in the networks. And it's the kind of connection that um, exists between different nodes or hubs, terms that will become clear later and that are part of the reading, that determine the behavior of the networks. Now, if you have a network, then uh, each of the entities in the network will interact uh, with its neighbors or with anybody who they are connected with through a set of simple rules. And the interesting thing about this is that those simple rules can then generate very sophisticated, non-trivial or emergent behavior for the system at large. Now you can think of a very simple network uh, 
um, that describes a behavior. Imagine you are in a soccer or a football, well, imagine a soccer stadium, and uh, all of a sudden a panic starts. So everybody will basically have a very simple set of operational rules, namely run, and uh, collectively that then describes the emergent property of the crowd as it tries to exit a stadium. That's a very simple network. More complex networks are, for instance, financial systems. And if you remember what happened in 2008, you see that uh, those networks can lead to some fantastic crashes because everybody tried to save their own skin and collectively that led to the financial crisis. So networks are essential. Now, if we uh, look at the dynamical properties of complex adaptive systems uh, or networks, uh, we can see that besides interactions based on simple rules, there are a few more essential processes. Signaling and information processing, for example. And that is basically an essential way of how communication happens along networks. Um, adaptation, that means that those networks change through time uh, and become better adapted to specific tasks. As a consequence, as we have already discussed, we see emergence and self-organization, properties that arise only at the level of the networks and that are not present uh, with any of the individual parts. Networks can also generate novelty. They uh, can explore and show new and unexpected behaviors and features. And networks tend to be relatively robust in the sense that small perturbations often do not really matter in the functioning of the network. Now think about um, a social network. Uh, generally, a group of people, if they're communicating uh, via Facebook or any of the other social media, if, if a few of them drop out, uh, that doesn't really change um, the group as such. Unless, of course, it's a particular architecture of a network where you have some central players or hubs. And if you take them out, then the whole network will undergo dramatic changes. So novelty and robustness um, are very intricately linked features. And we will discuss this um, in class some more with some examples uh, as they relate to cities. Another important feature of networks and complex adaptive systems is that they have a certain degree of unpredictability. Um, this is important uh, in particular uh, when you observe changes to a system because you might observe a small linear change but all of a sudden the behavior of the network can undergo a phase transition or it can reach a tipping point. Those are the two concepts that uh, describe the unpredictability of the network and all of a sudden the, net, uh, the system enters a completely different dynamics. You might be aware of an example of this in discussions of climate change. So right now uh, temperature warms by uh, a very gradual, small, incremental way, but that can change at any given time and we don't know when. Um, for instance, you know that uh, gradual warming will melt um, the ice in Greenland and will also lead to um, a reduction in the permafrost in Siberia and up in the mountains. And if that happens, you get a positive feedback loop and all of a sudden large amounts of methane are released, which then change the dynamics of climate change in unpredictable ways. That's called a tipping point. Now, in terms of cities, uh, what we uh, have to think about this is if cities grow. If you look at Lüneburg, for instance, it's a nice small medieval town. If you look at Phoenix, it's a mess. Um, when does Lüneburg become a mess if it would grow? When would it reach a tipping point where the dynamics of the city, for instance, would tr change dramatically? Those are the kind of issues that we want to study in the context of complex adaptive systems. A final point, complex adaptive systems also have a history. So you cannot you have to know the history of complex adaptive systems if you want to understand them, and especially also if you want to make prediction about their future. Now, uh, we have a whole set of readings that we will introduce in a moment. Uh, but before that, I want to uh, give you a set of five 
guiding questions that uh, you should keep in mind when you do the readings for this topic. So one is basically uh, a generic question about complex adaptive systems. What are they? And you can ask the same question, are there any interesting systems that are not complex? So in other words, isn't everything complexity or not? Uh, what are essential characteristics of complex adaptive systems beyond the ones that we have introduced here? And how do those more abstract notions apply to any concrete system? So think about your city, Lüneburg or Phoenix, and what are the characteristics in terms of complex adaptive systems that uh, you can find in these concrete instances? What are the elements of a science of complexity? Uh, you will see some of those references in particular the Mitchell reading. So think about to what degree a science of complexity is actually the science of the future and especially also uh, a foundation for understanding cities. So that's the next question. Why is the theory of complex adaptive systems essential to our understanding of cities? And you can ask the question, what do we gain from such an abstract theory? How can we make it more concrete? How does it play out in concrete uh, problems and instances? Now, you have uh, seven readings and uh, resources, none of them too long, all of them extremely interesting. Um, the first reading is the, the first chapter of Melanie Mitchell's book, Complexity, a Guided Tour. It basically poses the question, what is complexity? You have to keep in mind that Melanie Mitchell is a computer scientist, so take that into consideration. Uh, the second reading is arguably the classical uh, starting point for any investigation of complexity and complex adaptive systems. It's a paper from 1962 by Nobel laureate Herbert Simon. So one is Simon is read up who Herman Simon was. Um, it's a paper called The Architecture of Complexity and it's foundational from areas of from economics to biology the complexity theory. It's a brilliant paper. Then we have two TED Talks. Um, you remember, TED Talks are those 18 minute talks uh, on a specific topic. One is by Deborah Gordon. Uh, she is uh, one of the most prominent ant researchers from Stanford. And she basically uh, explores the question of what can ants tell us about people and cities? What can we learn about the emergent properties that? Uh, we can see in an ant colony. Another TED talk, uh, more abstract, by Stephen Wolfram, uh, the founder of Mathematica, who basically explores how computation is basically the underlying theory of complex adaptive systems. Now then we have uh, three readings that are more specific about cities. A short, uh, uh, more or less, essay by Louis Bettencourt and Geoffrey West, A Unified Theory of Urban Living. Um, this basically sketches the elements of how to understand cities as complex adaptive uh, city systems. Uh, a more specific paper by Louis Bettencourt and uh, several of his colleagues about growth, innovation, scaling, and the pace of life in cities. Now this brings in an important uh, principle uh, that physicists brought to the table, and namely the idea of scaling laws. Um, that is, well, how can, what can we learn from look, looking at systems at different sizes, and how, can, how, do we, how do they compare? In physics, that's called a scaling law or power law, and it has become a very important formal description uh, of cities. So this is a more technical paper, and we will spend quite some time in class discussing what it means. And uh, the summary of uh, those two papers can be seen by the TED talk that uh, Geoffrey West gave uh, a year and a half ago, The Surprising Mass of Cities and Corporations. So you might want to start with the TED talk, actually, and then go to the readings. Now, there's one final assignment. Uh, scaling laws, as we have suggested, are a central element of complex adaptive systems. Um, now, Phoenix and Lüneburg are different in size and scale, so uh, you might want to collect into the future data that will enable us to actually compare those two cities. 